We're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Hank Pym, Ant-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Hank Pym, Ant-Man. Now, if you're new to my channel or this series, what I typically do with key comic book spotlight is just take a notable superhero or supervillain and point out five key and or grail comic books that the comic book collecting community pursues when they're fans of this character. And in this one, we're doing Hank Pym. But before I get into the books, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. Uh, but let's get into this video here today, and we got to do Hank Pym Ant-Man. At some point in the future, I'll probably do a Scott Lang version of the Ant-Man, uh, but Hank Pym d definitely deserves his own sort of key comic book spotlight because he's had a lot of key moments within context to Marvel comic books, and there's a lot of sort of like personifications of the Hank Pym character that I think we can talk about. So we're definitely going to talk about his Ant-Man uh, persona, but we also got to, you know, mix in Giant Man and Yellow Jacket, etc. So uh, with that being said, let us get into the first book here. And the first book, of course, that I got to point out for Hank Pym Ant-Man is Tales to Astonish, number 27, first appearance of Hank Pym, and technically speaking, The Ant-Man. Now, this is a book that came out in 1961, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. And there you can see Hank Pym right there on the cover uh, being wrestled away by a bunch of his ants. Now, uh, in my personal opinion, I don't believe that this is necessarily the first appearance of the superhero version of the character that we know as Ant-Man, even though uh, they reference him, Hank Pym, as the Ant-Man in this uh, comic book, I don't feel like it is the Ant-Man character. Now, the Ant-Man versus Ant-Man. I know that that's a very specific technicality, uh, but in my personal opinion, uh, I believe that this is the first appearance of Henry Pym uh, and not necessarily in his superhero form. But with that being said, this is still an excellent book to have. I mean, this is definitely one of the oldest sort of blue chip grails that people often get uh, as far as like Marvel comic book collectors. I mean, when you were talking about a book that came out in 1961 and you can see right there it's a 10 center I mean this book is extremely rare to come by it is so hard to find this book uh, especially in higher grades I mean uh, this is one that you know it is really a ghost in in many ways in the comic book collecting uh, community and for that reason I think that this is a really awesome book to have now of course uh, this book would introduce Hank Pym uh, we would see him develop the Pym particles and sort of use it on himself where he you know at, at first he shrinks a couple of objects and and then he shrinks himself and finds himself, you know, confronted with a bunch of ants. And then he has to like, you know, uh, kind of honey, I shrunk the kids situation back to the formula that will actually make him large again. But like I was saying, because it is such an old book, because it is so iconic, because it is so significant, uh, this one definitely commands uh, a, a premium on the market. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that the highest grade on the census is actually a 9.4. Last sale back in December of 2016. Fair market value has this book sitting around the $360,000 range. Uh, here today in 2021. And then down here at the bottom, Go Collect has this listed at the, you know, $1,500 range, maybe the $1,000 range, uh, you know, at that low grade. Uh, but typically speaking, when I find this book, you know, being sold, even at the, those low grades, you know, you're looking at a book that's going to definitely hover around the $2,000 or $2,500 range or so. All right, the next book we got to talk about for Hank Pym, Ant-Man, is the one that I think is extremely undervalued in the market. And this, of course, is Tales to Astonish, number 35. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, I guess, would be considered the second appearance of Hank Pym. But in my personal opinion, I feel like this is the the first appearance of the Ant-Man character that we know to be a superhero. But, you know, I understand why this book isn't necessarily the sort of quote-unquote go-to book within context to the market. I mean, I feel like the fact that it says Return of the Ant-Man right there on the cover is sort of an acknowledgement that this is a second appearance as opposed to a first appearance. So I feel like just those words alone kind of hurt the values of this book. Although I think if we're looking at precedence for other things in the market, I mean, it's not like we the comic book community value the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy over the first appearance of Carnage. So in my personal opinion, I think that this is still an excellent book and in effectively a first appearance of the Ant-Man superhero. But regardless, still a great book. Doesn't matter if you have 
TTA 27 or TTA 35. These are awesome grails to have for Hank Pym. Uh, this, of course, is a book that came out in 1962, written by Stanley and drawn by Jack Kirby. Just a few issues later, they would return Hank Pym into the fold, into the Tales to Stana series, and continue his, like, you know, escapades. Now, in this particular issue, he would actually be recruited by the government to use his Pym particles to sort of act as that superhero uh, on their behalf. And so that's kind of, to me, where I feel like the superhero version of this character really, really starts to take shape. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there is a 9.4 also on the census, this one being the highest grade. Last sale back in December of 2016, uh, fair market value has this at $110,000. So I wonder if actually the person who bought uh, the TTA 27 also bought this one uh, back in December of 2016. And then down here at the bottom, you know, Go Collect has this one sitting at that $300 range or so. But this is definitely a book that I feel like has been heating up uh, in the market. I think a lot of people are starting to appreciate this one. Uh, so when I go into eBay, even when you find this thing at the low grade, I mean, I see this being sold around that $500, $600 range or so. All right, let's go on now to the next book for Hank Pym. And the next book is actually going to be Tales to Astonish number 49. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of Hank Pym as the moniker of Giant Man. Now, this, of course, is a book uh, that came out in 1963, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Don Heck. Now, uh, Ant-Man, of course, obviously his powers are shrinking down to the size of the ant. Uh, he explores with that sort of technology. He would come across uh, Janet Van Dyne, the wasp. They would form a connection and be the love interest uh, to each other. And then in this particular issue here, Tales to Astonish, number 49, uh, Hank Pym would discover his ability to grow into a giant. Uh, naming himself, of course, Giant Man. Now, this, of course, is a moniker that would continue on uh, for many years throughout Marvel comic books. Uh, mostly speaking, you know, as he would, you know, serve on the Avengers team, he actually would be the Giant Man in most situations. And it feels like one of the reasons why they kind of wanted to give him uh, his own sort of ownable power was that, you know, once they brought Wasp into the fold, you know, she kind of served that sort of small, sneaky character uh, that packed a powerful punch. And so I think Stanley kind of wanted to give uh, Hank Pym uh, something unique to himself. And that is, of course, the ability to grow into a giant here. Now, the Giant Man moniker would end up actually being taken over uh, later by Bill Foster, who, of course, is uh, played by Lawrence Fishburne in the MCU. Uh, then there would be other characters that would also take up the mantle of Giant Man. Uh, recently, it's Raz Malhotra, uh, who is currently serving as the Giant Man moniker slash the Giant Man character. And for that reason, this is a very important book as it relates to Hank Pym, but also, you know, Marvel Comics as a whole. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there is a 9.6 on the census. Uh, last sale back in September of 2021 so not too long ago. Fair market value has this one at the $4,600 range. And then down here at the bottom, you know, this is a book that you won't often see slabbed, you know, down here at the lowest grade. Uh, particularly speaking, when I go onto eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, you know, you're seeing it being sold around that kind of $100, $120, $130 range or so. All right, let's go on now to the next book here. And just to clarify, this is actually still my second pick. You know, I put TTA 27 and 35 as my first pick and then TTA 49 and, and Avengers number 28 as my second pick. And why do I, you know, group Tales to Astonish 49 and Avengers 28? Well, that's because these are two books where we're talking about Hank Pym being giant, except for the fact that instead of him being giant man, uh, now he will be named Goliath. So uh, what is the significance of this? Well, in Avengers 28, this would be when Hank Pym would take up the new costume designed by Scarlet Witch and also the new moniker of Goliath. This is a book that came out in 1966, uh, written by Stanley and drawn by Jack Kirby. Now, why did Hank Pym take up the Goliath mantle. Well, you know, Hank Pym at his core is a scientist and he was sort of thrust into sort of this superhero uh, team, uh, of course, being that of the Avengers. But, you know, as part of his character, you know, he didn't really want to be a superhero. He was more interested in, you know, being a scientist, exploring the technology, etc. So, you know, he would serve as the giant man character uh, in many of the Avengers books. Uh, but somewhere along the way, you know, he actually decided to retire uh, and maybe just kind of help the team when he can uh, as a scientist. But, you know, in this particular issue here, uh, Janet Van Dyne, of course, his love interest would be captured by the collector and uh, they would have to bring, you know, Hank Pym back into the team, back into the fold to kind of help uh, save her. And, you know, when they did that, uh, Hank Pym decided to kind of come up with a new brand for himself, a new moniker, and he would be known as Goliath. And Goliath is actually a really important moniker. Uh, later on would be taken up by Hawkeye, uh, just like later on in the Avengers run. Goliath would, of course, also be taken up 
by Bill Foster as well. And we would also get, you know, even uh, the Eric Johnston uh, Power Man version of Goliath. And he himself would be, you know, a part of that Thunderbolts team. So Goliath, like Giant Man, uh, the big characters that grow uh, to, you know, super, super tall uh, heights are very important to the Marvel Comics lore. And many people would be taking up these monikers in the future. Also, like I mentioned, uh, the Collector is involved in this book. This one is actually kind of special because it is also the first appearance of the Collector. And for that reason, it does command a little bit of a premium. So as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there is a 9.6 on the census uh, last sale back in July of 2012. Go Collect has this at a fair market value of 62.50. And then down here at the bottom, you know, you won't necessarily see it slabbed at the lowest grade. Uh, but this is a book that I would say, you know, typically speaking, when you're hunting on this thing for this thing on eBay, you know, you're seeing it being sold around that $70, $80 range or so. All right, let's go on now to my third pick here. And my third pick for Hank Pym Key Comics is actually going to be Avengers number 59. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of the Hank Pym Yellow Jacket character. Now, why did Hank Pym once again change his persona? Well, of course, in a couple issues before this, uh, this was actually going to be the first appearance of the character known as Ultron. And if you're familiar uh, with Ultron uh, in the comic books, or maybe you saw, you know, Ultron in the MCU, uh, you would know that Ultron is a creation of the Avengers themselves. Of course, in comic book lore, it was actually Hank Pym who created Ultron to, you know, serve as a robot that would be a part of the Avengers team. Uh, but like we know uh, with Ultron, you know, he ended up turning against the master and, uh, you know, through that sort of shame and guilt in creating, uh, you know, his own sort of demon, so to speak, uh, Hank Pym actually decided to kind of once again retire from the Avengers team. And then he was toying with some chemicals and through the guilt and the chemicals, uh, he kind of developed sort of this schizophrenic personality where he would become this yellow jacket character. And the yellow jacket character character is way different than Hank Pym, the scientist. The Yellow Jacket was a lot more mean, a lot more aggressive, uh, and he would be, you know, not necessarily using the Pym particles as his, you know, persona, but he would still use his technical abilities to serve as kind of like, almost like Marvel's first anti-hero in a way. In fact, this is a pretty significant, uh, you know, moment, I think, in comic books, because uh, I'm not really sure if this has ever really occurred before, but talk about one of the biggest heel turns uh, in comic books, where you, you know, I don't think there's ever been a situation situation where a superhero has actually flipped on their persona to actually in some way be a super villain or at least, uh, you know, I guess an anti-hero in this kind of situation. Of course, there are other characters who would also eventually take up the mantle of Yellow Jacket, uh, most notably Darren Cross Yellow Jacket, who of course we saw in the Ant-Man movie. But for the most part, the Yellow Jacket persona, in my opinion, mostly belongs to Hank Pym. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there are 9.8s selling around the fair market value of 57.50, last sale back in December of 2019. And then down here at the bottom, again, not a book that you're gonna see slapped at the lowest grades, uh, but typically speaking, when I go into eBay, you can find this thing being sold around that 40, 50, $60 range or so. All right, let's go on out to my fourth pick here. My fourth pick is actually gonna be Marvel feature number four presents The Astonishing Ant-Man. Now this is a book that came out in 1972, written by Roy Thomas and drawn by Herb Trimp. And what is the significance of this? Well, as far as I can tell, this is actually the first time you would see Ant-Man right there in the title. Now, granted, this is a Marvel Feature Presents title, uh, but Ant-Man, surprisingly enough, wouldn't get his own sort of solo series until much, much, much later down the line in comic books. I mean, we're talking in the late 2000s, and even then, it would sort of not really be the Ant-Man Hank Pym version that we would know. Uh, there would be many different iterations of characters and versions and things like that. So for that reason, in my opinion, this book right here, Marvel Feature Number 4, presents the astonishing Ant-Man is effectively Hank Pym Ant-Man's first solo title and solo series. And so for that reason, I think that this is a great under kind of appreciated collector's book for that reason. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there are 9.8s selling around the $1,200 range, last sale back in May of 2015. And then down here at the bottom, of course, not gonna be slabbed, uh, but this isn't necessarily a very expensive book. When you go into eBay, you can find copies of this thing, you know, sitting around that $25, $30, $40 range or so. All right, and let's go on out to my last pick. And my last pick is actually gonna be Uncanny Avengers number four from 2016, written by Gary Dugan and drawn by 
Ryan Stegman. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is when Hank Pym would merge with Ultron. That is right, Hank Pym merging with Ultron. Now, this is a crazy story and a crazy situation that would feature Ultron, you know, coming back to Earth, doing his Ultron thing, you know, attacking uh, the planet, wanting to get rid of the Hank Pym character. And it would kind of culminate in this battle of, you know, Hank Pym as Giant Man uh, versus Ultron. And they would all kind of merge together and then, you know, explosions and crazy stuff would happen. And then from the debris, you know, there would be an explosion and we kind of didn't really know what happened. And then eventually here in Uncanny Avengers number four, it would be revealed that, you know, in the chaos of that moment and that battle, Hank Pym and Ultron would actually merge. So here you would find uh, the, the reveal of the fact that they actually merged into one character. And talk about, you you know, we, the, that idea of we create our own demons. I mean, this is really, you know, the culmination of everything that Hank Pym had to endure, you know, the guilt that he, uh, you know, had with creating the Ultron character, his long history within Marvel comic books. Uh, this would be that point where he would actually merge with that, you know, evil, so to speak, within himself and become Ultron itself. Now, later on, it would be actually end up being revealed that when they actually did do the emergence, it was actually Ultron uh, who was was you know lifting up the consciousness of Hank Pym. So technically speaking, Hank Pym actually died uh, during that mergence. And the character that we would kind of get where it was sort of like uh, a Hank Pym Ultron character was actually really just Ultron, uh, you know, kind of lifting up Hank Pym's subconscious. So, you know, I, I know kind of a crazy story, wibbly wobbly, whatever, whatever, but still an important situation uh, simply due to the fact that, you know, this is the reveal of when that character was merged. And effectively, once that character was merged and, and revealed, this effectively, in some ways, could be the, you know, death of Hank Pym, or at least the time in which uh, Hank Pym would actually die. And for that reason, in my opinion, is definitely a significant book. But when we dig into the numbers here, this is not a very expensive one at all. You can see that there are fair market value 9.8s sitting at that $20 range. I mean, this is a book that's definitely not gonna be slabbed too often, uh, but when you go onto eBay, you can definitely find this thing sitting around that 10 or $15 range or so. Well, that is all I have for this video. Those are my picks for Hank Pym Ant-Man key comic book spotlight. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? I think Ant Hank Pym, Ant-Man, is a really complex character who's sort of gone through a lot. I mean, I feel like uh, the writers over time have, you know, kind of, almost like it damaged him in a way and they had to sort of redeem him many times over. I mean, there's like famous comments about Jim Shooter talking about when they drew the panel of Yellow Jacket striking Janet Van Dyne that it was meant to look like an accident, but they couldn't do it or they couldn't change the panel because, you know, there wasn't enough time. Uh, so, you know, I think that was like one of the things that really hurt, you know, the PR of the character. Uh, but Hank Pym, very, very complex uh, and eventually, you know, would be taken over by, you know, Scott Lang, Ant-Man. And I think, you know, Scott Lang, Ant-Man from here on out, is really going to be the character uh, that we see as the Ant-Man character uh, for the rest of Marvel comic book history. But who knows? Maybe we'll get Hank, Hank Pym uh, coming back again in Marvel comic books. Maybe, you know, these characters never truly die, but as, of, as it stands right now, he is technically deceased uh, in the comic book continuity. Anyways, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.